Full of Bass Pro, a couple rods and a flat bottom boat. Hook it up to the truck, got a hot date with a fishing hole. Got a nice chest, well it's empty right now. Grab a 30 pack, fill it up, I sit down. Back the boat down the ramp, ease her out through the no way zone. Well there ain't no better way on a Saturday to drift away from reality. Another line Yo guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of On Another Line. My name is Tyler Waller, also known as Fishing with Tyler. To my left, uh, usually Josh Bryant. He had to work over a little bit this evening. He'll be here as soon as he can. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that um, song we got. We uh, partnered with uh, Lance Carpenter and licensed the song to use it. So I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm super pumped about that. I am very, very um, you know, proud of having that song and being able to use it. It's really good. Um, it's called um, Another Line. Go out there on uh, Amazon or... Um, iTunes, Google Play, download that thing for sure. Um, again, Josh will be here just as soon. Actually, Josh is watching now. Josh, let me know if you can hear me all right. Uh, got a pretty action-packed uh, episode for you guys tonight, and it is luckily we are back in fishing season. I am loving it. Um, the FLW series started uh, two weeks ago or last week. I'm not real sure, and then... Um, this week, actually today, the Bassmaster Elite Series started on Lake Martin. Um, and we're going to look at that, look at the different uh, uh, weights that were weighed in today. Um, a couple big sacks, but a lot of the people that were there uh, are not finding them, uh, which is weird. It's usually that place has usually got giant spots everywhere. So, um, you know, so I, I'm glad that we're back into that. So let's uh, let's take a look here really quickly. Um, a couple things we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the different types of hooks and what their uses are. Um, Misty has a lady that is uh, working, that works with her, is wanting to uh, surprise her boyfriend, husband, whatever, um, with some fishing hooks for um, Lake St. Clair, or I'm sorry, uh, Gunnersville, I think is where he's headed. Uh, she wants to buy them for him for his uh, Valentine's Day present. So I figure what better time to teach people about the different styles of hooks and what they're used for than on this episode of On Another Line. Um, first and foremost, I want to throw out a uh, thanks uh, for the people that are affiliated with the show. JB's Fish Sauce, Angler, Shimano G. Loomis, um, and many more. We'll get to those throughout the, the rest of the show here. But definitely want to throw out a thanks to those people because without them, uh, none of this would be possible. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, you know, there's so many different types of hooks out there that, you know, I'm overwhelmed sometimes when I go, especially, man, go to the tackle box one day and just walk down the hook aisle and you'll see what I'm talking about. There's different types of hooks. There's a hundreds, uh, you know, hundreds of different name brands, um, different brands within those names. And, you know, it's, it's overwhelming to be honest with you. So uh, a couple of things we're going to tackle is, um, you know, what styles are the hooks? What kind of hooks can you buy? You know, we're not going to go through every style of hook, but I'm just going to go through some of the ones that are the most uh, pertinent that people are going to use today. Um, we're going to talk about some bass fishing hooks. We're going to talk about a few that are, you know, panfish hooks and, and a few other things. Um, also, we're going to talk about, um, you know, what those things are used for. Uh, are there, um, you know, is there a wrong way to use a hook? Um, and also, we're going to talk about some of the dangers and, and some of the stuff that you need to make sure that you're paying attention to when you're using the hooks to make sure we're staying safe out on the water. So, without further ado, we are going to transition in here to um, a PowerPoint that I've created. 
And the PowerPoint here is, you know, basically just what we're going up. Hey, Tyler, what's up, brother? How you feeling, man? I see you out there. Larry Slack's watching with us, man. I appreciate it. Guys, if you don't care, share this thing out. Hey, Erica, how you doing? Um, share this thing out to anybody you can get it to. Um, by the way, we're going to give a rod away. Uh, it ain't going to be live because we haven't reached 500 views or 500 likes on our page. But what we're going to do is I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to post it before lunch tomorrow. So if you guys have shared that post that I shared before, um, we're going to get rid of this rod and we're going to ship it to you free. And um, to be honest with you guys, it's a $90 rod. It's a super nice rod, probably a good frog rod or something like that. But again, I fish uh, Shimano and G Loomis, so I'm not going to use it. Josh is not going to use it. So that's why we chose to give it away. We want somebody out there, one of you lucky people out there to use the thing because I, I know you'll put it to better use than we will. And there ain't no sense of it sitting over here in the corner and just going to waste. So um, it's, uh, you know, so that's going to happen. But guys, this, this rod, um, you know, I want to thank each and every one of you guys out there that have shared the post about that thing because we have people sharing that thing all over the world, which is amazing. I thank you guys very much. Uh, had a, several people share it from around uh, Australia and places like that, which it's, um, you know, Josh and I bit off a lot when we said we were going to ship this thing to wherever. Um, I checked shipping rates yesterday to ship this rod to Australia, $259. Yep, you heard that right. Two hundred and fifty nine dollars. So if you win out there um, in Australia, you guys better uh, enjoy this rod because uh, it's going to be about a three hundred and fifty dollar rod before it gets there. Um, so uh, anyway, without further ado, again, back into the um, the PowerPoint here. So when we talk about hooks, you know, where do we start? There's so many hooks on the market and you know which one do I need which ones used for each application is there multiple applications for each hook can I get away with just using one hook for all applications you know we're gonna answer some of those questions as we go along um, which hooks work for each application just like I said um, is there a wrong way to use a hook and different types of brands we're gonna talk about I'm gonna give you a couple of my favorite brands uh, as we go on so um, you know, the very first hook that everybody is used to using or have, has seen in the past is the old, good old fashioned bait holder hook. You know, you've all, you know, all seen these, you've all used them. They're considered kind of the white bread of hooks. You know, they're the, the most basic hook that you can get. People know what they are. Um, you know, you can go to Walmart, you can go to a flea market, you can go to anywhere and buy these things. Uh, notice they do have a, a, barbed shank there on the back of them. I do have an, a barbed point. Uh, these are called bait holder hooks for a reason. Uh, you're going to use these for like um, red worms or night crawlers and stuff like that. You could use these for, for live bait if you wanted to. I see hundreds of people doing it actually. Um, but you know there are different, different uses for that. Uh, again it has a barb point on the front or on the point of it actually and it has barbs on the back and that keeps the bait up on the hook keeps it from sliding off. Um, they come in many, many, many different sizes, um, tons of different sizes. You know, there's, there's, you know, too many to list to be honest with you. Uh, I saw them uh, all the way down to like a size 16, 18, 22, which is, you know, minuscule. We're talking very, very baby, um, really, really small dry flies uh, for trout if they're uh, taking small baits. Um, you know, mainly used for bank fishing or pan fish. Um, again, they they usually come pre-tied with a with a leader, um, and it's usually like a 20 to 25 pound test leader, uh, depending on what size you use. Um, and they are tied with a snail knot uh, that holds that leader on there. Um, I used to use these things exclusively. Like this was the only hook that I ever used was this bait holder. Um, because one, they're cheap. Two, they're really easy to get your hands on. And three, they work. Um, you know, before I got into the really uh, hardcore side of bass fishing, this is where I I started. You know, I would go to the I go to the store way back in the day. Those of you guys are from the area uh, will remember this uh, Vix Bait Shop down on uh, 650. Um, one of my all time favorite places to go. Um, the old man. I don't know that he knew much about fishing. Um, he liked to fish, I can tell you that, because he would tuck your ear off when he went down there. That was some of the most fond memories when I was a kid is going down to Vic's Bait Store, grabbing some of these uh, bait holder hooks, going back to my mom's house, getting a loaf of bread, because I would use bread, um, put around these hooks and catch uh, bluegill out of a 
small farm pond or actually a, a, a strip mine pond there in um, close to my mom's house. These things, again, guys, you really can't go wrong with them if you're talking about doing uh, bank fishing or, or pan fishing. Um, and if you're using live bait, such as a, a minnow or something like that, you're going to want to try to go to a different style hook, which we're going to talk to talk about in just a second. Uh, matter of fact, we'll go to that hook right now. Um, the next hook we're going to talk about is the Aberdeen hook. A lot of times they're uh, looked at as somebody, a lot of people call them golden Aberdeens because 90% of the time these things are gold in color. Um, they're not made out of gold, obviously. They're just gold plated. Um, and I've actually had panfish, uh, crappie, uh, and bluegill eat a golden Aberdeen without having any bait on it. I guess it's just the shininess or the flashiness of it that they eat. Uh, but one thing you're going to notice different about this is the fact that this Aberdeen has a smooth shank on the back of it. It doesn't have any barbs. Um, another thing that you're going to see about this is that the wire that's made this hook is made from is a lot lighter. Um, it bends easier. Um, two, one of the things about this is the reason that it's such a good um, choice when you're using live bait, especially smaller live bait, is the fact that the wire is a lot smaller. So you know, for lack of a better term, you're not punching a bigger hole in the bait that you needed to, and it's going to live and it's going to stay alive longer, which is going to give you more action with your bait and going to allow you to catch more and bigger fish. Um, no barbs on the shank, as I as I said, it, it's kind of similar to the bait holder, but there's no barbs on the shank. Uh, round bend there at the bottom, there you can see this a round bend going into the point with the barb on it, as well as at the other end there is a uh, round eye. You know, you could tie these things on with pretty much any knot that you want. Um, you know, back in the day when I used these things for pan fishing, when I was uh, in, you know, in the bluegill days of my life, I would just tie regular old granny knots on these things uh, and they would work. Um, now I would probably tie, you know, a trialing knot or uh, a uni knot on them, something that will hold and give you some more re leverage. Um, could you tie a snail knot on these? You could, um, but well, where the the round bend there on the eye is not um it's not tilted back or it's not uh, offset um you have a chance of slipping those uh, loops off off of the uh, eye there so uh keep that in mind it's a good choice for crappie guys and timber because the thing about it is with that light wire what you can do is if you get snagged up in the timber um depending on what line size you have is you can actually straighten this hook out enough to actually get it off of the um the timber or the snag whatever you're working on or whatever you're hooked on um the uh, the thing about um, the Aberdeen is when you when you get hooked up, guys. You know you get snagged up. You can if you straighten the hook out. No matter what hook it is, you're going to be talking about is you have to um, you're going to have to bend that hook back. And the less you know, the more bend that you put on that hook, more often than not. Um, bending it out and bending it back into where it's, it's in the correct shape, you're going to uh, um, you're going to cause that metal to become more weak, and eventually it's going to break. Um, so keep that in mind. So if you're doing that a lot, you might want to cut it off, tying in another uh, another hook there. Um, again, great choice for small bait, small live bait, because it doesn't punch as big a hole into the bait, and it's going to live longer. Next hook we are going to talk about is going to be the Siwash hook or Siwash hook. Um, this is one of my favorites um, just for simple fact is I never ever ever throw a bait, uh, a buzz bait or a spinner bait without a trailer hook. Um, this is what style hook that that is. There are several several ways that you can actually put this thing on a um, spinner bait or a buzz bait. Some of them actually use a piece of uh, medical style tubing or uh, rubber tubing that fits over the eyelet there that you see. Um, this eyelet right here um, would have a piece of medical t uh, tubing or rubber tubing go over it and then you would actually put your hook through that whole that eye there. Um, and it actually hangs off the back of your normal hook on a buzz bait or spinner bait. I cannot tell you how many times that I've actually caught fish on a trailer hook as opposed to um, being, you know, not having a uh, a trailer hook. It's definitely something I, I need to have and I, I want to have it because of my confidence level. Uh, smooth shank, just the same as the Aberdeen hook, 
but again the round bend notice that there's a gap there in that round bend that is um you know it, it's there for a reason um and again that's for either either attaching it to other things or putting it on uh as a trailer for a uh, for another bait it has a larger wire size than the Aberdeen. Everybody, you know, you can look at this and say this is the exact same hook as an Aberdeen. It's a uh, straight shank. It is smooth shanked, round eye, round bend. Um, this hook is actually a lot bigger than Aber Aberdeen. The gap between the point and the shanks is a lot bigger on this hook. Um, you know, can be the thing about this is, guys, you can substitute this for a treble hook when laws require only one hook point per hook. If you have one, uh, you know, that there's not any places like that around here, but I know in California and places like that, there are places that are being more and more strict when it comes to having only one hook point per hook, um, which when we talk about treble hooks here in just a second, I'm sure you're aware of that. But one thing about it is uh, you can, uh, you know, you can swap these out. Um, I don't not sure how, I guess it would probably still work on a crankbait. I've never tried them, but on a jigging spoon or you know, buzz bait, spinner bait, something like that. Obviously, they have them anyway, but um, I guess you could throw them on a uh, on a crankbait, and I'd say they would still run the same. Um, you're gonna have less of a chance of a hookup, but that's the whole point in it. Uh, that's the reason they make treble hooks illegal, um, because you know that you know they want you to have um, they want to give the the fish a fighting chance, if you will. Um, so Matt, I'm not Matthew. I'm not sure about your uh, your question there. Can you put chiggers on it? Can you uh, explain that a little bit, and I'll ex I'll try to answer it for you. Next question or next uh, slide here. The treble hook. This is one of my uh, favorite hooks of all time. This thing here is um, a fish catcher. Catcher. You can. Uh, you can use these how they're supposed to be used, and there's some people that use these things um, how they're not supposed to be used, and it's um, not very sportsmanlike. Some people would tie these things on and, and pour a bunch of lead around them and use them to snag fish, um, which is why a lot of places are, are doing away with them. They're actually going to one hook point. That way, you know, you get away from that. There are some places and some seasons that snagging is legal and allowed. Um, you know, I don't do any of that stuff. I'm a bass fisherman, and I use treble hooks on my crankbaits, uh, and that is pretty much it. Uh, again, they are legal in some uh, some uh, locations. Three barbed points. Um, they are at um, you know they're pretty dangerous. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, they're not dangerous in their self. They're just a regular hook. Um, but anybody that's had one of these things in a decent sized bass mouth, uh, whether it be small mouth, spotted bass, or large mouth, um, when you stick your hand in a fish's mouth, their first reaction is to try to get away from you. So they're going to shake and, and move all over the place. So these things become, you know, weapons um, as they go around, especially when you get into the really big stuff um, like. You know, different. Uh, let's see, let me grab this really quick. You talk about um, hooks such as this thing right here. Check out those things. It's a uh, custom made swim bait by Scott Crabtree in Ironton, Ohio. Um, it a few times I'm gonna chunk the heck out of this thing um, but these hooks right here again they're huge they're big I mean they're big as <laughs> 50 cent pieces um, you know so when you get in stuff like that they're, they're really big and really dangerous but you have those things flailing all over the place when you when you got a fish hook um, it could be very 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 dangerous you're right Tyler in your hand um, and that's the thing about it is man that's why I say they're so dangerous is the fact because you can get them in your hand. Um, and the next thing I want to say is learn the braid trick. Um, luckily, knock on wood, around here if I can find some. Uh, uh, I don't. I've never had to do this to myself. Um, I have been hooked with treble hooks in my hands, and I actually have one uh, in my leg a couple years ago, but it just barely grazed the skin, and the hook point come out. So I was really lucky there. But 
Um, I did actually have to do the braid trick on my dad there two years ago. We were walleye fishing using stinger hooks uh, on uh, worm harnesses, and he had a fish flop and bury a treble hook in his thumb. Uh, so that's the only time I've ever had to do a bait, the braid trick. But what the braid trick is, guys, um, I don't have any braid here to really show you, but if you have a hook in your hand, wherever it's at, you're going to... First off, take this hook off of the lure. Don't try to do this while the, the lure is all flailing around there. Take this hook off of, of the lure, off the uh, the split ring, and just so the hook is the only thing that's attached to your body wherever it's at. Um, I don't know if you guys watch Major League Fishing, but um, there's a fellow that got a hook in his hand there the other day that uh, they done the braid trick on. But um, I think it was Keith Poche. Um, but you're going to take that hook off and wherever that hook is in your body you're going to wrap some braid around that bend of that hook where whichever hook is in your skin or in your body and again guys if it's down past the barb is what I'm talking about if it goes past the barb best thing to do is just cut the barb off and feed it back through um, but if it's you know the barbs buried and you don't want to push it all the way through um, you can actually wrap some braid around this thing press down on the eye of the hook so instead of this you're going to press as far as down as you can on the eye of the hook and then yank that thing out as quick as possible um, is it going to hurt absolutely i'm not going to say that it's not uh, but what you're doing with that angle when you press down on that eye it's actually causing the barb to move away from your skin a little bit and then that allows you to bring the the hook back out of the channel that the hook has already made in your skin um, so learn it. Look on YouTube. Matter of fact, KVD uh, had a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, for sure, Kyler. Hey, John, how you doing, brother? Um, it, it's definitely a lifesaver. Learn the braid trick. Get online. Uh, it was on, I think, Bassmaster posted it out there. Uh, KVD was fishing last year, maybe, year before last, casting a big, giant, deep-diving crankbait and got like a 2 watt um, treble hook in his palm. Well, there was a, he has a boat official there and he had a guy that was running the camera, but I don't know if he didn't trust him or if they can't, the boat official can't help at all. I don't know, but he called some people out of like, that were watching around him, watching him fish. He called the guy over there, um, wrapped a big bunch of braid around it and had this guy rip it out of his hand. Um, you know, and the only person I've ever seen fish with in their hand was Keith Poche the other day. They just tight, they just taped it up really tight so it wouldn't move. Um, personally, for me, I think I'd just rather get that thing out of there. One thing about treble hooks is, guys, that you can actually use the wrong treble hooks for different baits. Um, for example, that, those big old giant hooks that I have on that swim bait there, you tie that on a 1.5, and obviously things are going to go awry. Um, you're not going to have a lot of... Uh, you're not, you're not going to have a lot of uh, issues with that. You know, or a lot of a lot of success with that. Maybe you will. I don't know. That's not something I'm going to try. But you could take a one size bigger hook and put it on a 1.5 and actually get it to dive deeper and actually have different action. Guys, the hooks that come on these crankbaits are the ones that they have tested and the ones that they have designated to use for these for these lures. Uh, the reason they do that is because they do a lot of research and development trying to get these lures to one become buoyant or move as much as they can uh, under the water and have the right action that they want. Again, you f have all you know rights to change your treble hooks. Matter of fact, I change a lot of mine. Um, I change it from standard to wide gap, which we're going to talk about in just a second. Um, and then again, you know, there's a lot of stuff like. You know, I I change it to one size bigger on some of my 1.5 crankbaits just for the simple fact is I want them to dive maybe a half a foot or a foot deeper. With that extra weight on there, it causes that to do that. However, it, it does cause the action of the bait to actually move a little less, so keep that in mind. Um, again, uh, you can get heavy wire treble hooks that are, you know, the same size but heavier wire. So if you want to just try to add some weight to one of your crankbaits uh, and you don't want the hooks to go any bigger, you can do that. Uh, one thing about it is, guys, if you're throwing a crankbait and your treble hooks are constantly looping inside of each other, you know, so I'm not sure that this bait will do it, but actually it will. 
you see that this um, bait here will actually have the lure, the the um, hooks. They'll interlock. Uh, matter of fact, they'll interlock in two hooks. A um, couple things that could be the cause of that. One, these hooks could be too big. Two, the D or the split rings could be too big. Um, or it could be the fact that this thing is uh, is jointed here. So uh, that could be it. But if you're constantly if you're casting these things and you come back a lot of times and your hooks are locked together like this, um, you may have a problem with your hooks being too big or your uh, split rings being too big. Um, it's taken a little bit to actually for me to get this thing on there, but notice that I can get them to do that. Um, you're going to decrease your hookup ratios consi you know, considerably by having that happen. So make sure you have the right hooks on the right crankbaits that you're wanting to use. Next hook we're going to talk about is going to be the octopus style hook. Um, finesse bait, finesse style. Uh, I use it when I'm drop shouting. Yeah, Kyler, that's a great point. Um, if you have a, um, a, a jerk bait that you like um, and you'd like to see that thing either rise, uh, most of them are set right now, depending on what kind you buy, obviously, but are set from the factory. When you get it down to a certain depth, they pretty much suspend right there as, as much as they can. They're going to be a little bit buoyant or sink a little bit, depending on which one you're using. But if you want to try to get a uh, jerk bait to get lower or get deeper in the water column definitely as Kyler says there um, change the the crankbaits or the uh, treble hooks on them to a little bit either heavier wire or bigger hook and you're gonna get that that depth out of them um, you can also get it to sink um, my favorite thing for a jerk bait to do is when I'm working it I want it to suspend and I want it to slowly ascend up um, that's what I think is the best but a, a dying fish more often than not is going to fall down than than go up in my experience hey scott what's up brother how's that uh charger treating you by the way guys um those of you guys that got in on the jb's fish sauce thing last week i appreciate you guys i think uh aaron and uh brad miller uh you guys were definitely orders um if you guys are interested in getting your hands on some jb's fish sauce um definitely um shoot me a message after this and I uh, can get you hooked up with a code to save you 20% on your first order. So that'll help you save you some stuff. Uh, matter of fact, Aaron bought some, was going to Kissimmee. I'm going to show you guys a picture here in a little bit of two giants that he caught down there. But he would come back and the fish sauce was at his house. So too bad he didn't get to take it down there. Cool, man. That, that charger has worked great for me so far. Um, works awesome. I love the fact that you can take it outside and it'll, it's got a solar charger on it, which is pretty cool. But the octopus style, you know, it's used for drop shotting, in my opinion. It's what I use it for. Um, usually smaller. Uh, the hooks are usually smaller for finesse application. <laughs> Josh, is here. Josh is here. My dog doesn't like it. All right. Um, one thing that I want to take uh, talk to you guys about is... Um, is the fact that when you are drop shouting, um, geez, hold on a second. All right, sorry. Um, you know, when you are drop shouting, uh, one thing that I want you to make sure that you are doing is uh, uh, make sure that you're nose hooking your baits. Um, you know, make sure that your baits are coming off of the hook in a straight line. Don't um, you know? Don't just hook it through the top of the the worm and have it going all over the place. Because what's going to happen is, when you do that, you're going to get a lot of line twist. You're going to be causing a lot of different things to happen with your line. So that's one thing that you definitely, definitely don't want to do, is that. So again, um, nose hook it to make sure you keep from line twist from happening. Um, can be used for live bait. Uh, matter of fact, I've seen some things, some people use them for live bait hooks. Um, and I would say they work pretty well. They're actually really small. They're probably the same size diameter as a golden Aberdeen or, um, you know, something of that nature. Um, some of these octopus style hooks are some of the sharpest ones I've ever felt in my entire life. Uh, they're extremely, extremely, um, they're super, super sharp. Um, one thing I want you to notice here is here, uh, the very last thing there that I said is make sure that you... Um, have the hook point up when it's tied on. If you notice the secondary uh, little diagram there on the left, um, you can see the hook point is above the um, 
above the worm there. Uh, you don't want that thing facing towards the bottom of the lake. You're gonna you're gonna decrease your hook uh, setup rate or your hook set ratios considerably, um, and it's going to cause you to um, lose a lot more fish. All right, so that brings us into worm hooks. Worm hooks, in my opinion, have the most variety of any hooks that are out there. Um, just for the simple fact is there's many, many different types, and they're mainly used for soft plastics. Well, there's different hooks set up for different soft plastics. There's actually different soft plastics made for different style hooks. The, um, you know, it just depends on. One thing about it is, is that, you know, I mainly use offset shank um, as opposed to straight shank, which we'll get into in just a second. Um, but it just depends on what um, you know what application you're using or what application you're messing with before you uh, you know it depends on what hook you choose. Um, my thing actually, uh, we have uh, Mark Zona there that just done a, an episode of I think it was on Zona Live there the other day. Uh, that said what uh, you know what uses are for the different types of hooks well he he solidified what I said was um, offset shank for casting long distances if you're casting um, soft plax plastics you know away from your boat you're going to want to use an offset shank which I'll show you a picture of in just a second uh, straight shank is going to be more for close quarters combat if you're pitching heavy cover or punching mats really close to your boat you're going to want that straight shank. Uh, the straight shank versus offset shank, one of the things you're going to get from that is a lot heavier of a wire diameter. So it's going to be a lot thicker. It's not going to bend as easy. You're going to get a better penetration with the hook set. There's not going to be as much flex of the hook. Um, so, and again, the next picture here is going to show you uh, offset versus straight shank. On the left hand side we have a straight shank pitching hook. Notice that there is a bait keeper there on the back of that thing. Uh, that is to keep your bait from sliding down the hook when you set the hook or when you're coming through cover. It keeps it from uh, pulling off the hook. On the right hand side you have a straight shank, or I'm sorry, an offset shank hook. Um, and this is again the one that I use when I'm casting distances. I'm casting um, soft plastics away from my boat. Uh, I use this. Um, the reason is because it gives the bait a more streamlined profile and allows it to come over timber and, and different types of structure better than the uh, the straight shank. But notice there the difference in the wire sizes. You have the on the left the offset shank is a really meaty. It's a really thick hook, uh, and the reason that is is because you want to be able to get that hook out of the cover that you're using it. Um, set the hook on that bad boy in a stump we've all had that 10 pound stump that we've all had um it's they're very tough to get out um just for a simple fact is they bury in deep um the next episode i'm going to show you guys a uh, a workaround that something that i've done something that i've made that will allow me to get hooks and stuff like that back so but that's offset versus straight shank um and one thing about it is is that you um when you working when you're working with this thing is that you need to make sure that you know can you use one for the other sure you can use a straight shank hook when you're casting can you use an offset hook when you're pitching yes i do pitch with a offset shank hook i mean it, it there's no rhyme or reason for it just for the simple fact that it's easy to tie on and i like that streamlined um, effect there. And I'm going to show you guys a, a deal I picked up on Amazon that helps me with that in just a second. Um, next thing is EWG versus standard. You guys have all seen uh, wide gaps, ex you know, extra wide gap. Uh, there's just wide gap WG hooks versus standard. The one on the right hand side is actually a standard round bend offset shank hook. Uh, the one on the left is an extra wide gap. Um, so you can see the difference is the gap between the point of the hook and the shank is a lot bigger on the EWG. Um, some people like the extra wide gap when it comes to worm hooks. Personally, I'm a standard like person. Um, you know, I, I like the the standard style. Uh, they do have their their benefits. So one thing about it is coming back at you. We got Josh back in the house right now. We uh, uh, you should <laughs> tell us. You should tell those people you got better things to do than work. 
Well, I tried to tell them that, but it don't pay the bills. So, you know, I got forced over. So I made it. I was just a little bit later. Yep, it happens. Um, yeah. So anyway, Josh, we've been talking about different types and different styles of hooks, talking about that stuff. We had a question a second ago. I haven't seen. Um, uh, fella said that he wanted to know if we can put chiggers on it. I don't know if he was being funny or if that's uh, I'd something. i say that's funny. You ever had chiggers? Oh, yeah, it's I've awful. had some chiggers. Awful. Talk about on a hook. So. Oh, well. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, oh, I've yes, had some man. chiggers, bud. Back in the day, <laughs> back in the day when I used to be a big bow hunter, it was an every weekend thing for sure. All right, so let's get through this and we'll continue where we're going here. Um, so again, uh, EWG versus standard is going to be the extreme or extra wide gap or wide gap hooks. They do make wide gaps in, uh, in treble hooks uh, and worm hooks. There's a bunch of different types of wide gap hooks. Um, again, make sure you're you're going with the mentality of offset shank if I'm casting a, a good distance away from my boat when I'm talking about soft plastics and use that straight shank if I'm doing you know close quarters pitching and punching mats close to your boat. So which brings us to the last question of the night. Brands. What brands do you use? What's the best brands? Should I stay away from some brands? Should I buy other brands? As you know if you go to the tackle box or any other um, tackle store in the area, hooks are not cheap. Especially if you buy good hooks, you're looking at anywhere from five to, I've seen them to 50 bucks a pack, depending on how many come in a pack. A um, couple brands that I believe in and I use is definitely Gamakatsu and Mustad. Uh, I use Gamakatsu more than anything. I believe that Mustad hooks are amazing. Uh, Owner's another good brand. Yeah, I like Owner's. Owner's is good. Uh, Eagle Claw. Um, Eagle Claw has been around for you know a century and a day. They've been around for years. Um, Eagle Claw now has a subsidiary company, I believe, called Trocar, and they are supposedly one of the sharpest hooks on the planet because they are shaped like a hypodermic needle. They have three part, three points coming up, or three like bases coming up to a point, which will allow the hooks to be a lot sharper. I personally have never used a trocar hook because when they come out, they were like five bucks a piece, um, and I get snagged a lot. Maybe that's the gold ones that you was talking about. Yeah, right? yeah, the gold ones. Yeah, that's. Well, I, I can't knock them. I know, I know, uh, Zona and. Um, Dave Mercer and those guys, they use the crap out of Trocar, and I'm sure they're really good hooks. Guys, I've used Eagle Claw since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. We talked about the very first, you know, a lot of a lot of people, when they think of an Eagle Claw hook, this bait holder is what comes to mind. Um, because you go to Walmart or whatever, and you go look over in the Eagle Claw brand, you're going to see those bait holders. Um, but, again, my favorite two, definitely at the top two, there's going to be Gamakatsu, um, Mustad, and then you're probably going to throw an owner there somewhere in those. Eagle Claw, especially the Trocar series, um, they're just a little bit, uh, um, they're just a little bit more, um, more pricey. But there's no cheap hooks out there. There are cheap hooks, but you get what you pay for, definitely. So, one thing you and I was driving here, and I was listening, I wasn't watching for all those people who say, you know. But uh, he was talking about treble hooks, and I got a, I got a story I'm going to share. Yes, I love Is, stories. Uh, Chris Hopper, we went to St. Clair, we're throwing, uh, I think we're throwing, I don't know if we're throwing crankbaits. I think we're throwing crankbaits. And uh, he catches like a three pounder, gets it in, and it goes right here. Right in the middle finger, right in the joint. Yes. And it's hooked down, and Roger Joseph was there. And I'm trying to roll this thing, man. And I'm gagging. Like, it's, like, making me sick just pulling on it. <laughs> so we take a pair of needle nose and shove down on it and pop it through and then cut it off and roll it back out. And when it popped, I don't know if it's a tendon or what, dude. I'm telling you, I, I wanted to throw up for him. And he's like, he kept saying, it's in me, not you, do it. And I'm like, it's still hurting, you know. Yeah. So it, uh, it definitely, man, them treble hooks was is, is awful to get caught up in your hand. Yeah, and like I said, I, I've had them where they've, I tell you what, last year when I caught that muskie that I caught there, very first one I've ever caught was um it was definitely an experience because one i just about screwed up man um <laughs> throwing a bone white uh fluke i'm sorry a spook i always say fluke but a bone white 
spook throwing it out in this creek. I wouldn't even. I don't watch my topwater baits a lot of times, just for a simple fact that if I'm watching it and I see a fish blow up on it, I'm more apt to jerk it out of its mouth, not catch the fish. So, um, so I don't look at it. But I heard this monstrosity of a just it sounded like somebody threw a cinder block on my lure. So I knew it wasn't a bass. I had no clue what it was. Thought I drug it across the carp or something. Well, long story short, I hooked it, got it in. It was a musky, probably 25, 28 inches long. It wasn't a giant. Chris Hopper's watching. <laughs> hey Chris, tell them about the hook at St. Clair. That's all you gotta do. That's that's I'm telling you, he knows it was awful. Oh, that's bad. But that's funny I said that then he joined, so what's up Chris? Good to see you, pal. I swear NSA man. <laughs> they hey, are we've talked you. about that. Oh my right? god, dude. I I I've it's happened like ten <laughs> times in the past three days. Or yeah. these these iPhones right here. <laughs> they are listening to you i promise um yeah we were talking i was talking about somebody like i hadn't heard from somebody i was like yeah i was like uh i sent we were actually trying to get with uh, uh somebody to do a, a segment on here and <laughs> yeah. i was like josh was like did you ever hear back from him? i said no i didn't i guess i'll have to email him tomorrow and then i mean like 20 minutes later i get an email from him like hey dude what's up i was like whoa that's crazy hey scott miller what's up brother <laughs> yeah the uh but yeah, we're I'm, our phones are bugged, so yeah, don't they, text they gotta the secret be. stuff. Yeah, for sure. Maybe uh, it's th- maybe it's everybody's phone. It could be. I, I believe it's everybody's phone. It yeah. is just fine. Pretty good stuff. Yeah. Um, so one thing I was going to show you guys a second ago is that I want to uh, show you this something I picked up on Amazon there the other day. Let me get rid of this stuff on the background here. All right, so. I use bobber stops um, when it comes to pitching and flipping on any worm hook that I'm I'm using right now. This is a uh, a pack of bobber stops that I bought off of Amazon. Um, you can see there. I'm pretty sure you can tell where they came from just from the uh, the writing there on the top. Um, they were that, that means a lot. Yeah, that's that, what this means. I'm pretty sure yeah, a lot. <laughs> a lot. You got a bunch. It's a hundred a lot. A hundred. <laughs> but. Anyway, I ordered these things. Um, there are 600 bobber stops in here. Um, you know, you put these things on your line, tie your sinker on, or put your slip sinker on, then tie your hook on, then push this thing down over your slip sinker so your slip sinker doesn't slip up your line when you're pitching. Um, these things are like 4 bucks for like 10 or 12 of them at Bass Pro Shop. I got uh, 600 of them. There's six on each one of these things. I'm sure I won't be able to get it to focus well, now that the camera went off, <laughs> definitely it's not going to focus. Um, Wake up. But you it's can like see. It's a little sleepy today, Tyler. Yeah, I guarantee yeah. it. But maybe I can get it to focus here. There you you can see. There you go. Um, you can see those things. They're little rubber, just, you know, little specks of rubber. And then they have um, loops at the bottom. You p- stick your line through the loops um, here. And then pull the the bobber stop through. But long story short, I bought these things on Amazon. Uh, I'm not going to link it down in the bottom. You guys can find it. Just search for bobber stops. These things were six bucks um, shipped. I have Amazon Prime. They were six bucks for six hundred of them. So um, I'll have a few. Um, I'll be good for the next uh, year or so. Actually, I think I got Kyle buying them too. Uh, if you don't have Amazon Prime, it's still they're pretty expensive to be honest with you. They're like fifteen bucks for that many, but Amazon Prime is where it's at. Yeah, you got a Prime account, don't you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, my wife does. You know how that shopping thing goes. She tagged me in this thing today about something about hiding since her and the daughters go shopping all the time. They hide the bags <laughs> in the van. So when I get home from work tonight, I know that they're out. I'm gonna go check it. There you just go. to see, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing, guys. I'm I, sure everybody uh, has that problem, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> I uh, took delivery of a Ooh. new rod. Check this bad boy out. Look at that. Zodius. This is a uh, medium heavy power Zodius. Um, it is a 172 medium heavy. Um, this thing is going to be uh, paired up with a uh, Corrado, one of the new Corrado K series with uh, in the 8 gear ratio, which is going to be a burner, but I'm going to use this thing for a pitching and flipping. Um, set you know up. what the line really is like it's got to be like 32, 34 inches probably uh, it's, it's, I don't know, I haven't ever looked at it but uh, Shimano Zodius there guys that's uh, my newest pickup um, again, 
we are going to give a fishing rod away. We're going to do that tomorrow. I was going to try to wait until, um, I was going to wait until I got to 500 likes on a channel, but I don't think we're going to get there, uh, to be honest with you. Just for a simple fact of one, um, it's kind of slowed down. Two, I've caught some flack over <laughs> us sharing this thing. Guys, it's a free fishing rod. Yeah. It was given to Josh. We're sharing the thing. We're not promoting the rod brand. This thing may be the biggest piece of crap in the world. Rob, it's a $90 rod. Somebody's going to have it. Right. It looks like a nice rod. Um, and, it, you know, it, I'm sure it'll do you guys justice. And, again, I told them earlier, Josh, that I don't think I told you, but uh, shipping uh, that rod to Australia is $258. Yeah, just so you know, you agreed to. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we're out. splitting that, yeah. right? <laughs> $258 to ship a rod to Australia, which yeah. is which is a lot it's of money. It's down under, man. But yeah, it's a lot of. <laughs> what do you do? The thing about it is, uh, that's cool, though. We've, we've had people share it from. Bulgaria. From Maine to California, yeah. um, you know, North Dakota to Texas, Florida. Mexico. Florida, Bulgaria, um, the <laughs> Netherlands, Indiana. Oh, I mean, I think it's it was been, a New York in there too. It's been wild, man. There's been like sixty some shares, and they've been all over no, the world, which is I think pretty it was cool. Over ninety, ninety shares. Yeah, um, I think we, so. We'll last time cup. I checked, guys, I, I don't out. know how much it is. Uh, um, but we were looking to try to get five hundred likes and share or five hundred likes on the page. Some people have already liked the page that um, that already shared it, so. Again, um, a really heartfelt thank you goes to every one of you guys that shared it, and you guys are in the running to win that rod. It will be <clears> announced tomorrow by the time my lunchtime is, which is noon Eastern Standard Time. Um, so you guys are that have shared that, you will be entered in the drawing. Uh, we have 93 shares right now, 92 comments. So if you think about 92 comments times three, um, you know there's been a lot of people tagged in on that thing. Some people um, chose to take part, some didn't. And again. Some people have um, some deals going on with other rod companies and chose not to share it. Guys, that is totally fine. Oh, I totally yeah. understand. Um, it's no big deal. Like I said, it was going to sit in the corner of the of the house here. Um, Josh and I weren't going to use it. I fish from on G. Loomis, so does Josh. So it doesn't... Uh, not only that. Only well, I mean, yeah, you're kind of transitioning yeah. over to it. But, you, but yeah. you know, that's... I mean, that's like I'm saying. The rod was given to me, and I told Tyler, I was like, man, it's give to me. I'm not going to use it, you know, and I, and, and I just said, what can we do with it? And he goes, let's give it away. I mean, yeah. You know, I'm not going to charge somebody for it. You know, when I was given to me. So, you know, that's the reason where we chose to give us away. You know, we're not trying to make anything off the rods. We're not endorsing this rod at all. I have never thrown this rod. It still has the tag right on it. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's never here. had a. I don't know if it's even never had a reel in it. It's never we have it. I, I know for sure it's never had a reel in it. It was yeah. it was one, and then um, you know it's just it's a yeah. really thick rod, guys. It'll be a good frog rod or pitching rod. Um, but again, like I said, we're not going to use it, so it's going to be coming your way. Yeah. So make sure you share it. Give the post on our page. Uh, share it. Tag three friends, and that gets you entered. Yeah, and tomorrow we're gonna. Yep, you have to uh, share the post, like the post, and when uh, and tag like three page. friends, and you have to like the page. Yeah. So, um, you know, a couple things there for an enter enter to win ninety dollar rod, not too bad. And you can do that all the way up until the time I draw it, which is going to be noon standard time tomorrow or Eastern standard time tomorrow. So I tell you what, we'll we'll put a comment in and put the drawings yeah. over the way you'll know. Yeah, I will. So if you see there that I said the you know this drawing's over, um, sorry about that. It's, but we've been at. <laughs> It's been going on since uh, last Thursday, I think. Uh, I think it's a week today, yeah. Yeah, a week today. So 90 pretty shares good. on a week is pretty good. good. Yeah, so thank you guys for doing I that. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, so one thing about it is, I mentioned a second ago, we are back in the saddle yes. as it comes to fishing, you know, different different um, times of year actually get my, uh, my hopes up. And one of those is going to be... Um, it's going to um, it's going to be fishing season. Um, fishing season is definitely one of my favorite times of year, um, and the reason that is is for the simple fact is it's time to go fishing. Um, obviously, we don't um, have the opportunity to go fishing like uh, like they are down in, in um, what are, where is Lake Martin? Lake Martin is that where is Alabama? It? Alabama, that's right. Yeah. Um, known for some big giant spotted bass. Um, it's proven to be stingy if yeah. you look at the pros down there um kvd uh, had 10 pounds today in five fish two pound average which 
Um, again, you know, that's not KVD style. Um, he's not a big spotted bass fisherman in any way. He'll tell you that. Um, but again, it's, uh, it's KVD. So let me, uh, pull up a window here. We'll check out the top, uh, rankings here for the elite series that is, that started today. Um, but it'll be going all the way until Did you see Sunday. One of the cops? Like one, he had two over six. Oh yeah, um, Cliff Prince is yeah, uh, yeah. killing it. Yeah, it's um, so. And he said he, I think he said it was either back to back cast or within like the same area that he didn't even like pre fish or something. Man, I mean, of course he probably. He yeah, didn't I didn't come. watch the live feed, yeah. but yeah. this um, this is the top of uh, the top of the leaderboard here. If you look at it here. Um, Cliff Prince is actually winning it with 19 pounds, 13 ounces. You can see there on the right, his big bass was 6'11". Dude, that is a toad. I don't care where you're at. Yeah, that's a... um, I'm going to show you a picture, guys, here in just a little bit of Aaron Lawson. Or, um, Aaron Lawson, oh, my God. Uh, dude's on my uh, uh, Aaron yeah. Strickland. Yeah. Um, Aaron Lawson is the crazy guy that shot everybody up here not yeah. too long ago. Um, Aaron Strickland went down to Kissimmee, and he uh, caught a... Uh, a couple of toads. I'm going to show you that. But a six pound, 11 ounce bass is a monster. Uh, Aaron and I were having a conversation through text there the other day. Uh, he's on a hunt for a 10 pound plus. I've personally never caught a 10 pound plus. So that's a, definitely a bucket yeah. lister for me too. Uh, but if you see here, Cliff Prince, 19 pounds, 13 ounces, five bass today. So man, that's a, that's a pretty I, good sack. It's a that's, pretty big drop from first to fifth. I mean, five pounds is a lot, you know what yeah, I mean? Especially... I mean, yeah, if you look you know, there with, between with the pros, Skeet Reese yeah. and, and Cliff Prince there, five pounds, like Josh says, five pounds there yeah. is is a lot. To, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of weight to make up, um, but it can be done, obviously. Takahiro Amori, man, he's one of my favorite all-time bass fishermen. I love that dude. Like, he's, you can just tell that he loves to fish. Yeah. He just, you know, it's not about being a foreigner or not from here, whatever. He's just a bass fisherman and loves to do it. Um, and that dude's heart is what, you know, kind of brings me to be one of his friends. Uh, Mark Menendez there in third place. Uh, Jesse Wiggins, Skeet Reese coming in at fifth. Uh, Skylar Hamilton. Um, you go all the way down to Jared Littner uh, there at 10, which is, um, I believe, is one of the few people that's actually um, sponsored by Shimano, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken there. Uh, Jared Littner and uh, I think Jonathan Van Dam. Uh, Dean Rojas there. Um, Dean Rojas. I, mean, I can't wait to head down. I'm going down to the Bassmaster Classic here in a couple months, or actually less than a couple months. Me and Kyle are going down there. Um, and we're going to have a good time. If you ain't never been to the Bassmaster Classic, definitely put it on your bucket list. It is an awesome time. Very, very, very fun time. Hey, Doug Malone. Hey, Jana. How you doing? Um, Max in here. Hey, brother. Um, Billy Bryant, man, how you doing? We got the whole fam on yeah. here tonight, so that's pretty cool. And Jesse, what's up, Jesse? You guys have any uh, questions for us right now? Again, we're gonna look, we're gonna continue looking at the um, the Bassmaster stuff here. Um, if you go down, Jonathan Van Dam there, Justin Lucas is a stick too. Um, Big Show Scroggins, um, Brent Chapman's always really good. Um, Mark Daniels. Um, Alton Jones, Edwin Evers, uh, another one of my faves. Mike McClellan, met him a few years ago. Awesome guy. And look yeah. at this, guys. These guys are freaking amazing fishermen. You know what I mean? So that tells right. you what. This is super, super hard down there in uh, the Bassmaster Elite at Lake Martin. Um, again, Andy Montgomery there, 26. Hank Cherry. Casey Ashley, who was a Bassmaster Classic champion two years ago, last time I was there at Hartwell. Um, I'm not sure if he if he's there again if if he's in the running I need to check that out because he's definitely a, a fan favorite and a hometown favorite there he uh, won it on an underspin uh, and it, it was a, a great uh, you know it was kind of like a hometown story it was I'm awesome pretty sure he is I think I'm pretty sure he is too um, Gerald Swindle and G Man yeah, guys I'm telling you if you don't have G Man on your Facebook go add him that dude is hilarious did you see the video I think it was yesterday the day before of him laying under his console yeah because it's thunder and lightning out yeah, exactly. i mean it, it dude's just funny you know what i mean he just he, he, he's he's southern as all get out and, uh, he, yeah he, he posted just, uh he posted good, there man. a few days ago 
got all these crazy kids eating Tide Pods. <laughs> and he, uh, he made a meme and posted it that said, uh, does eating Tide Pods take racing straps out of your underwear? Asking for a friend. Asking for a friend. That's pretty classic. Um, so let's go back there and look at some more of what's happening there. Um, so Aaron Martins is an all, you know, all these guys are awesome guys. They're on the, they're on the elite series, but if you look way down here, Mike Iaconelli is 39th. Um, let's see. Brent Ayler is a stick. Brett Height, um, Wesley Strader, who I'm sure is, um, I, I'd say Morgan probably knows him really well. They're both, uh, affiliated with Powell Fishing Rods. Um, let's see. Fred Rumbanis. But if you go all the way down here to 62nd place here, you have KBD. Um, KBD is an awesome fisherman. Everybody says when he come up to that point where he didn't make it the Bassmaster Classic two years ago, everybody said he lost his touch. <laughs> I say bull crap. Yeah. <laughs> it's, fish, it's, you know, it, it's one of those deals where the dude is a stick, man. He, he catches fish. I think he was a fish in his previous life. You can give him a fishing rod and a mud hole, and he'll pick one out of there. Oh, yeah. um, so, you know, don't count him out. Um, Seth Fighter is a um, Minnesota fella out there in, in uh, Jim Block's territory, JB's Fish Sauce. By the way, guys, again, I want to thank you guys that bought the JB's right, Fish yeah, Sauce last week. It. Thank you guys very much. Um, so that shows our show actually has some impact. If you and guys also, are, if they go to order, man, make sure you text us so we can uh, – Hook you up a little bit. Yeah, Can't right. tell you what it is or what it all's about, but if you go to order, make sure you send us a message. Yeah, um, either one of us. We can so definitely uh, definitely make it worth your while. Um, you'll get it, you'll like it, and you'll continue to order. I'm sure yeah. of it. Uh, as I said, uh, Brad Miller, I appreciate you grabbing it, brother. And uh, Aaron Strickland grabbed some. Um, and he went to Kissimmee the other day and I asked him if he was ready, if he his boat smelled like garlic, uh, and he said no because it hadn't come in yet when he left. Uh, but it was sitting on his, you know, it was his house when he got home, which is pretty cool. Um, but, you know, those of you guys that, that stuck around with us last week, uh, you got to hear us talk to James Block from JB's Fish Sauce. He lives in um, Minnesota. Um, the dude makes a an awesome fish attractant called JB's Fish Sauce. You can pick that stuff up online at jbsfishsauce.com. Or you can also message us again if you want to get a uh, percentage off your first order. Uh, we can definitely hook you up with that. Um, it's a good stuff. It's good, good product. It's handmade, one batch at a time in the United States of America. It's shipped to you via James Block. He doesn't have anybody working for him. Um, you know, he's he believes in his product. He's a fisherman. It's made by a fisherman for fishermen, and you will enjoy the product. I promise. Um, and it's, I mean, it's pretty amazing stuff. Hey Tyler, you can put it on uh, everything. He's got a couple of different uh, setups he uses. He's got the uh, chapstick, the gel, the spray. Um, your jigs are soft plastic. I'd recommend the spray bottle, which is the uh, little four ounce, right? I think it's four, seven ounce, four or seven ounce little uh, spray nozzle. And uh, on that bag right there. Yeah, let me see. And then let's see that bag. The uh, and the crank baits. A lot of people are putting them in the gel, or there's like a chapstick thing. Yeah. But the, uh, yeah, what's up, Kyler? But, uh, yeah, let me see. Four ounces. Yeah, that's right. Oh, sorry. So there's the crawfish. Let's see it there. That's what the little spray, you know. I would spray in Tyler's house, but it would kill me. Uh, actually, that's not too bad, but the <laughs> yeah. garlic. Um, but that is, uh, you know, that's, it's easily, it's more easily sprayed on your baits. Uh, again, I talked about it before. I'm really OCD about my boat and my carpet because it's just for simple. <laughs> Excuse me, just for the simple fact that it's extremely expensive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Boats are not cheap, guys. When you have Ranger boats that are $110,000, right. I don't care what it is, I'm not putting it in a boat. Matter of fact, yeah. I probably wouldn't even get in the boat at $100,000. Jeez. But I can't afford to look at that one. Me either. It, I mean, that's, my that's wallet just... gets thinner when I look at it. Um, speaking <laughs> yeah. of which, um, again, I think I told you guys before, but just a quick update on my boat. Uh-oh. Update was... Um, the uh, stator was bad, um, so instead of being a two thousand dollar fix for an EMM, it ended up being about a six hundred fifty dollar fix. I'm um, still in the shop right now, been in there about three weeks, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Um, there you go, Kyler, doing some dishes, huh? <laughs> passing go. time. Uh, hey, Cody, what's up, brother? Rand's large man. That's one of my former students there in the military. How's life treating you, brother? Um, appreciate you uh, out there. Um, you know. 
fighting for us while we yeah. are uh, being able to do what yeah. we do. Yeah, thanks for your service. Hey, Cody, you been doing any fishing lately? I see you guys have been freaking killing a bunch of ducks and geese, <laughs> man. You guys have been hurting the population. That's yeah. awesome. I, I don't, is, do you ever eat duck? Yes, it's very greasy. Okay, that's what I've. Uh, I've never had nobody make it good. Everybody says it's everybody wonderful. says if it's cooked. So good, it, out there, you all guys, uh, you like duck because I don't. Well, we had some. We're, we're, have to, we're work, gonna have to go down to. We're gonna have to go down to Cody's house and <laughs> yeah. let him. Um, yeah, I'm not a, hook, us, hook us up. So we'll I like duck. eating duck. Oh yeah, I'm not. A, I'm a big fan of eating. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. Um, so one thing I want to mention before we go on, guys, is I want to make sure that you guys are aware of that we're doing a, a bass fishing tournament uh, yep. here in the springtime. It's going to be a March Madness style tournament. It's going to be produced by myself and, and Josh, but we're going to be hosting this uh, with the help of uh, the Tackle Box in South Point, Ohio. Um, and I'm going to stop right there just to tell you if you guys are in the area next Saturday and Sunday, which is going to be the 17th and 18th, they're having their annual open house at the Tackle Box. Myself, Drew Sadler, I think uh, Steve Riley will be there from Shimano. Um, there's going to be somebody in house from the Angler crew that's going to be talking about the, uh, the Angler app and tracker, doing some hands on stuff there. Great rods and reels and all kind of other discounts that you can get into. Also, they give away a rod and reel combo uh, at the end of every day, I believe. Uh, maybe the rod and reel combo is at the end of Sunday, but if you go there on Saturday, you get entered into that even on Sunday. Um, and you do not have to be present to win that. So definitely come up there. The Shimano Experience team will be there. Um, and at everything that you know that, that Shimano or G Loomis makes, uh, Jackal, Power Pro, stuff like that, they'll have it. They'll have a brand new Skeeter boat up there that's wrapped in all the really cool Shimano stuff. You can talk to the people. Um, Ethan there with the um, Shimano Experience team is probably one of the most knowledgeable people about Shimano and G Loomis products on the planet. Um, and they will get you hooked up with what you need. You can go out there and try out all the rods and reels and stuff that they have and then walk directly into the tackle box and buy them. Um, so it's really nice to get your hands on them. You can fill them, you can cast them. And that way you can come in and, and make a, um, you know, an educated purchase. Um, but, um, you know, we're going to have this tournament uh, in the springtime, hopefully. I'll say, uh, Cody says you can make anything taste good. Yeah, put A1 on it. Uh, and he said, uh, what month? You going to have the tournament? Um, that, that's the thing. We're and gonna. I guess put out, Larry said each day. I guess. They yeah, they, they do. It, I, he's right. They do one each day. Um, one thing about it is they um, the the specification or the specifics of this tournament is not knocked down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Google uh, document or not a document, but a Google sheet tomorrow, um, and then or a form. Sorry, and I'm going to share it out. It's going to be a poll. I'm going to ask your opinion. Where, what month do you think we, should ha think we should have it? I don't want to interfere with all the bass clubs around here. I don't want to interfere with the BFLs or the Costa yeah. Series or whatever because I know that. And that really, really limits the amount of days that we can do it. Um, and another thing that I want people to understand is that you need to make sure that you're getting, um, when you sign up for this, you're signing up for two weekends. It'll be a Saturday-Sunday tournament, and then it'll be a following Saturday tournament to, to finish it off. Uh, and I'm going to put that out there to let everybody talk about Yatesville and stuff. I don't care where it's at, guys. I'm not going to fish it. I would love to be able to fish it. I think it's one of the coolest things in the world. Um, but I think it's going to be a lot of um, a lot of work uh, to put this thing on. I'm going to try to bring in a lot of sponsors. I'm going to talk to Drew Sadler and Steve Riley at Shimano to see if they can do anything to help us out with, with prizes. Um, they usually, uh, it was actually Steve Riley's idea, uh, and I'm sure the Tackle Box will, catch, uh, will pitch in some stuff. So it's going to be worth your while. But those of you guys who don't know what I'm talking about, we're going to have a, basically we're going to call it like a March Madness style tournament. Um, and, you know, we may even may make it the annual on another line tournament. There you go. Um, where, you know, you, you say there's 50 boats, you go and you draw a number and like boat one and boat one, you guys are the only ones fishing against each other that day. So the other 48 boats in the field, you don't care what they catch. They can catch 50 pounds for all you, you know, as long as you catch one ounce more than the person you're matched against, you win that day. And then what will happen is you'll cut the field down to half. So there'll be 25 boats and obviously you know, you're, you're looking at different things there, you know, because if you have 25 boats that, you know, somebody is going to get a buy there. Um, so we're going to have to look at stuff like that. So, um, well, what we talked about doing was pairing a few people up that way. 
you know, like I said, we haven't ironed out exactly all the specifics, but we got them pretty close, and, and we have discussions about what will happen, and we're going to make the rules. So we make it fair for everybody, you know. Yeah, so what will happen is that second day, which will be on the Sunday, um, and you guys will fish and you'll draw another number again and you'll be paired, you'll be paired against one other boat. Um, and that's the only boat that you have to worry about beating for that day. Um, and then the next tournament, which will be the following Saturday or whenever we can schedule it, however we can schedule it, it'll be those people that are left, you know, whatever it is, 12 people or 12, 12 boats. You guys will then be in a regular style tournament where it's tw everybody against everybody. But what we're going to do is with the prize money, we're going to make it so if you make it till the last day, you're guaranteed to at least get your money right. back, um, which is you know good. And one thing I think is going to make a lot of difference with that is the fact that it's going to bring in some new tournament anglers, people that don't want to go out there and get their rear end whipped by the KBDs of the area. You know what I mean? Because yeah. there's some people that can catch fish, you know. Um, Mickey G in the house. What's up, brother? Um, and that's the thing. Like, you know, Cody catches fish. There's a bunch of people. Brandon Klein, Aaron Strickland, those guys, they catch fish. Uh, Chris Malone's a really good stick in the area. Bill Kinder, that guy catches fish. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's a bunch of people like that. And there's when I first started bass fishing, those people, you know, their names precede them. Why? Because it's not because they're, you know, buttholes or anything. It's just they fish. They catch fish, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's oh, what yeah. it is. So. Yeah. So when you think about that is you get, you know, I don't want people to get like, I don't know, shocked into saying, I'm not going to fish a tournament because this person, this person, this person's fishing. I don't have a chance. So could you get a possibility of drawing, you know, somebody like Drew Sadler, uh, you know, if he fishes? Yeah, you have opportunity to, oh, yeah. to fish with these guys. And don't get me wrong. Some of these guys, you're going to have to bring your A game on. Yeah. Um, but, but it's all going to be random. It's not like we're going to pair the people up and say, well, we want this person against yeah. this person. It's no. going to be completely random. We are not going to and try to cheat anybody. We want to have fun, have a good time. That's what it's all about. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I don't know how I want to do it. I'm not looking to make a, a, a huge profit off of this um, or at any, at any at all, to be honest with you. Um, I'm trying to get it to where I can get our names out there a little bit yeah. and, and have a fun tournament, guys. I think the idea of having a bracket-style tournament is going to be something really fun. Mm -hmm. um, and I hear tell that Angler um, is bringing out something new with their app that will make it a whole lot funner. Um, there's a lot of stuff they talked about at ICAST coming out that will make it awesome because what will happen is is you can actually if you're if you download the angler app people can get online and watch where you're fishing at and as you put fish in the boat it's almost like uh you know mlf um yeah, but yeah. you know obviously there won't be any weights there but if they see you set the hook on a fish or whatever it actually logs the thing and everything so i want to try to get them in on it uh and i think it's going to be a really really fun idea so josh you had any questions in the past few days that uh, we need to tackle no, I've, I've been working. That's all I've got done the past few days. And I text Tyler at like, what, 2.30? Yeah, he's like, I man, like, I got man, mandated. I'm late. I'm going to be late. I got mandated. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Uh, hopefully that thing, I, actually, I'm going to talk to Greg Drown at the tackle box. I, the other. I got a question for anybody out there. Uh, battery chargers, mine kicked the bucket. Well, one out of three. And I was going to switch up and buy the Minn Kota, I think, Precision. Uh, you got me. I, I don't think, know, I think it's Minn Kota Precision. It. It's like you can choose the the different uh, battery type stuff like that. If anybody's got one, it's supposed to be like five pounds. The other one's like 25. Jeez. And uh, I just, if anybody's got one, how do you like it? What do you think about it? I'm, I don't know. I over-research things probably more than I should. Yeah, uh, but, speaking, yeah, speaking of researching anything. things, I've uh, been looking the past few weeks on a different graph that I'm going to be buying. Um, I'm a Humminbird guy right now. I love Humminbird. Uh, they're awesome graphs. Um, I like Lorance, uh, excuse me, also, but I think Humminbird, as far as down scan and side scan, has, has them beat a little bit. Um, but I've been doing a lot of research on other companies. Ray Marine has one of the that most awesome. awesome things awesome. in the world and i'm going to show you this thing really quickly if i can um and again this is not my video at all i'm just going to show you a clip of it uh it's a fellow talking about they have a 3d view of your sonar 
and it is amazing. Um, so I'm definitely looking into Raymarine. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna see what's, you know, they're not cheap. You're looking at the higher end of a hummingbird at about 2,800 bucks. Um, so give me just a second here. Um, while I'm looking here, one thing that I want to mention is if you didn't hear our uh, intro music or have our um, or see the intro, we'll be playing it here in just a second when we get out of here in just a few minutes. But if you guys want to hear the song, you need to uh, head on over to uh, iTunes or Google Play and search up Lance Carpenter. And uh, the dude's an awesome artist. Yeah. I met him several years ago down at a writer's retreat in uh, Haverhill. I was lucky enough to get on there and play some music for those guys. Um, and the thing about it was is that, you know, I heard this song. He actually played it out there at that writer's retreat. And I immediately fell in love with this song. The, this, uh, you know, this song is an awesome song. It's called Another Line. Go out there and check it out. Um, buy it on iTunes. Um, you're definitely, definitely going to like it. Um, matter of fact, I tell you what, let's just play it again for yeah. you. What's up, Tim? Uh, Cody, be safe, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See you, Cody. Guys, I'm going to play this intro for you really quickly. You let me know what you guys think. In a flat bottom boat Hook it up to the truck Got a hot date With a fishing hole Got a nice chest Well it's empty right now Grab a 30 pack Fill it up I sit down Back the boat Down the ramp Ease her out Through the no way zone Well there ain't no better way On a Saturday To drift away from reality Drown your night Another line. So, the song just wants man, I tell you what, it gets me pumped yeah. up, man. I'm ready to go fishing right now. <laughs> right go. now, I'm on another line. Lance Carpenter, guys, check that yep, out. But check him out, man. Yeah, I'm gonna show you here really quickly. This thing I'm I'm talking about um, is the. It's a Raymarine Axiom 12, but it is the real view sonar. Um, so hopefully you guys can hear this. I'm pretty sure you can, but um, we're going to see if actually, here you go. That's, that's so cool looking, man. Check it out. I mean. So, I mean, that is a game changer for me, man. I am a technology guru. That is like... Dude, it, uh, it's come so far. It's ridiculous. I mean, honestly, oh, like, like the fish finders of the old days. Remember, like, the little fish, yeah. right? Fish. You hey, know, Jill, to, what's up? To, to, to now, man, it's just... It's unbelievable what the technology's done as far as yeah. GPS and sat-down engine and 
three D scan and all that, man. It's 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 cool. I yeah. like. It. I mean, I'm like you. I like the technology. You know, LED lights, use them this. You know, amperage, making batteries last longer. I mean, all this stuff's cool. Yeah, I mean, it, the thing about it is, you're going to pay for new technology, and oh, five yeah. years from now, that real view will be on the two hundred dollar model. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right now, it's right. three thousand dollars for that thing, which is crazy. Um, you know, one thing that I've been doing some research on is, um, in your opinion, I'm going to upgrade one of the two things on my boat here soon. Either the graph, I have six inch Humminbird graphs and they're okay. They're down scan imaging, side scan imaging, so or down scan, not side, they're down scan imaging um, models. So they actually, they're collar, they're pretty decent, but they're five inch models, they're really small. So I'm thinking about putting a 12 inch on my boat. Um, I want to stay with Humminbird because that's what I have, but that Axiom is, oh man, that's amazing. Um, but would you buy a Minn Kota Altera trolling motor, or would you buy a 12-inch graph? What would you do? Well, I don't have a 12-inch graph. I got a 10. All right. But I have the Altera, and I love it. It is awesome. I mean, man, it launched itself, and it's got the remote. The spot lock is is awesome. You know, if you're heading like uh, one direction, if you're you know you're fishing only points or only certain places, you get it going a certain direction, it'll change itself to keep you straight for wind speed. Uh, it's but you can link them into the hummingbird. I think I think it's got the way you can link them in yeah. the hummingbird. But I don't know, man. I, I'm, uh, my biggest thing, like your you trolling said, motor works good. So I have a you yeah. know an eighty pound. Um, all tracks right now or um yeah on all tracks right now yeah that i like um it's a great trolling motor um i broke a cable on it last week but or last year but it was frayed i knew that when i bought the boat so i knew it was going to break um you very rarely see broken cables on Minn Kota's. um I, on the other hand on motor guides you know i can speak from personal experience that kyle has busted like 10 of them yeah. uh, and so that's that's a downfall for me but um, the biggest thing about wanting an Altera is is the fact that I can arm it, back my boat in the water. I don't know if you guys saw Brent Ayler the other day, but Brent Ayler on uh, on Instagram posted a picture of his boat way out in the lake. Uh, let me see if I can find that for you. But the reason that he did that is the fact that he backed his boat in the water. I'm sure he um, probably had it. Uh, nosed up on the ramp with his kill guard, and it probably came off. Let's see if I can find him really quickly. Let me show you the picture that I'm talking about. Um, but the the thing about it is, is the reason that I have the want to have one of those things is the fact that I. I want to be able to launch my boat by myself. Um, yeah, there's going to be times where Josh is not fishing with me, Misty's not fishing with me, right. and I go out and do bass, some, you know, do some pre-fishing or whatever during the week when I'm off in the summertime. Um, and it's nice just to be able to arm my trolling motor and be able to dump the thing in the lake um, and have that thing, you know, come back to me if I want it to be. Um, here is the picture that I'm talking about. Right. Brent Ayler's boat is setting out there in the water. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. That's uh, I don't know how he got to it. I didn't read through all the comments. There's a ton of comments on there. I don't know if somebody come and got him in a boat and, and brought it over to him. Somebody uh, somebody made a comment that I'm sure he had an extra rod or reel in his boat or in his truck, so he probably <laughs> went up and got some braid and like hooked it and reeled it in. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I know that that is what I don't want to happen. That's the reason I'm looking at the Altera. Um, so what would you guys do if you had the opportunity to buy an Altera or a 12 inch graph? What would you, I have a trolling motor that works really well right now. That's an 80 pound thrust, all treks. It works really well. Um, yeah, not you know, there's no, well. nothing wrong with it. Um, trolling motor batteries are new. Um, we, we fished a tournament that was a trolling motor only uh, tournament, and it pushed my boat to second place, getting to the back of the lake. So, and the only one that beat us was 112 pound uh, Altrex. Yeah. That. Um, hey, hey, Tyler, it's it's pretty tough. Uh, it actually has a little bit of give. It springs a little bit. Um, I mean, I've hit it against. I, there's a lifetime warranty on the shaft, 
The only thing I don't like about it is, is there's no stabilizer behind it. And when I put my cover on, it fit. But I mean, it's oh, cover under more. To, yeah, flexes, but it's it's pretty tough, Tyler. I mean, I've ran into stuff. I mean, I've put well, up they, a they call that the indestructible shaft, right? Yeah, it's something, man. It, I'm telling you. I, I'm pretty sure it's got a lifetime warranty. I think there's a three-year warranty on everything else, and then a lifetime on the shaft. Uh, check with man. I have to check on Mancota about that. But I'm pretty sure. And then, uh, but as far as it's got all kinds of connections, you can get to any graph. So I mean, that's no big deal. But man, I'll tell you, hit the button, it launches. Me personally, I had a little, I'm gonna say a learning curve <laughs> with the. Uh, with the electronic foot pedal, but yeah. I do like it. You can hit a take. You know, it's got everything there. Especially if you're going to get a lure out off or something, you can hit it real quick and right at the ten, and then right back to where you had it. Does the it, lower mode's pretty cool. So I mean, does it? Uh, does the trolling motor pedal move when you have it in spot lock, or does it stay stationary? It's, it stays straight even all the time. It just it rocks whenever you turn, and that's it. So yeah, it don't so, turn. It's just so when you hit spot lock or something, you don't see the. No. And just yeah, moves yeah. the shaft. All right. You, you can just watch it. Uh, Tyler, yes, sir, we'll link to Lawrence. I have Lawrence. I got HDS uh, Gen 2s on my boat. I got a 10 up there. So, yes, it does uh, link. There's an adapter cable. I want to say the cable was like 30 bucks, And uh, I got mine from uh, BBG Marine uh, down in Alabama. That guy's name is Brian. Dude, he's cool. Uh, you call him up on the phone. He answered. One day I called him. I was... Uh, buying something off of him, I can't remember, maybe Ram Mount or something, and he's fishing on the lake and he answers the phone. I'm like, I wouldn't answer my call, I'm just saying, you know. But he, he's pretty cool, uh, good dude. Free, I think it's shipping's like 10 bucks no matter what you buy. So uh, hook, hook me up, Tyler, I'll tell you where I got it at. Uh, I'm sure there's some deals out there. If you go on the BBC boards, I've seen a few on the BBC boards for sale. Yeah, but, they, uh, uh, I, actually, as far as me, Tyler, I don't know. It's a tough I flip decision. A coin. I flip a coin. Well, yeah. here's the thing about it. Here's, I know the cheaper one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the cheaper <laughs> one is the, the trolling motor. Yeah, it's so, like 2200 bucks. Um, yeah, Tyler, you'll love it, man. Yeah, you'll love it. I'm sure. St. Clair, it was awesome. See, I that's the thing. Like, I don't I don't fish out of this area much right now, but I plan to. I mean, yeah. Obviously, St. Clair is a, a, an every year thing for me now. I'm go, definitely going back. Yeah. Um, being able to spot lock on top of smallies and just catch them all day long is what I'm looking for. But one of the things that I'm looking towards to buying one of those as opposed to one of the standard trolling motors like I have now is the fact that one, I can launch my boat myself Two, it has spot lock. Um, and I like the opportunity to be able to raise and lower the shaft. No, oh, that's awesome. Too. Yeah, that part's so, awesome. like, if the waves start getting higher, you can lower it down a little bit instead of having to go out there and turn that nut and risk losing the 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 nut off the thing and and it, yeah. because it does happen and you know you end up being like bill dance where he's like <laughs> holding on to the trolling motor mm-hmm. and he can't get a hold of it yeah. but yeah it's uh, got power trim the uh and it's pretty quick like i mean it goes up and down pretty quick and like especially like if you you know we've all done it <clears throat> you know get up on a sandbar or something raise it up get off of it, put it right back down yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's a big cool. deal. Um, but the reason I don't, it's it's kind of a um, you know it, it's a double edged sword for me when I come about trying to buy a really high end graph. First off, being able to, right now I know how deep it is under my boat. Well, I don't right now. I <laughs> broke the transducer, but that's the reason I'm looking at that. Should I buy the two hundred dollar transducer for my six inch graphs or five inch graphs, or should I spend that two hundred bucks towards something that you know? I mean, the transducer is going to have to be bodied the way, and transducers are not cheap. They're like 400 bucks for those new Axioms. Um, but, you know, what the thing about it is, I'll never own a set of power poles. I don't have anything against power pole. I think they're awesome for what they are. Yeah. Like, Kyle lives up north now in Piqua, around, uh, actually lives in Troy, but he lives near Indian Lake and Grand Lake St. Mary's. These things are like 10 foot deep all the way across them. So you can, you know, you can see use of those every time you go out, you're going to use your power poles. Personally, I don't fish shallow water that often. Uh, take Yates Filters, for example. 
the only time I'm ever close enough to a bank to use power poles is when I'm up in a creek and that's in the springtime. A lot of times I'm doing power, I'm power fishing, I'm cranking or whatever. I'm not, I'm throwing a rattle trap, something that I'm moving on out with. So, you know, so I'm not going to need them. So the opportunity to be able to use spot lock when I'm in deeper water to keep me on a point. And there's a lot of things that I've done research about. I'm sure Josh can chime in. I understand that according to everybody that has one, one, there has to be wind, or two, there has to be current for it to stay in place with spot lock. No. Doesn't? No. Um, my, I guess my question is... <clears throat> It'll turn all the way around yeah, and my, back you up. So, if you're facing one way, it doesn't like won't have you all over the place? Uh, Yeah. I mean, like, if it's pushing you back, it'll stay where it's at. But, like, it'll keep the front of the boat where it's at. Yeah. Well, see, that's one thing that I was looking at is like, you know, if you're, if the current's coming down your boat like this, mm-hmm. it has something to force against. It has something to be there. But if it's just calm water, I think, you know, all trolling motors, you're going to be sitting there spinning. You'll be it's, on the same spot, but it's pretty good. I mean, like even on the, it'll keep you pretty close, you know, it'll back up a little bit, but you can <clears throat> adjust it pretty easy. Yeah. Well, and, uh, but it, it's. The spot lock, I'll tell you a story about a guy. Is uh, We were up St. Clair, and there was a, a guide. I can't remember his name I because I wanted to send him a message. And uh, we were way out, man, away from nobody. And I understand this dude's trying to make money. and uh, But we were having a good time. And he literally came, to me personally, too close. I could cast and hit him. Yeah. And uh, we were making drifts, so I literally cast it underneath his boat right as a boat one time just because i was aggravated but it got to a point i just hit the spot lock and just when i knew it was on top of the point i hit it and dude we didn't leave off that point and he was trying to throw in there and i understand he's trying to make money but we were literally away from everybody probably like a half a mile i mean you could barely see boats but of course you can see people catching fish yeah but we were way away and, and to me man if i can see the numbers on your boat you're way too close yeah, I mean, yeah. Th- that's the thing. I've, I've run into that situation being like this past uh, year, I fished the BFL Regional Championship, um, and we fished a spot that was a community hole on the lake. And when I say community hole, I mean there was 20 boats within 100 yards of this thing. Yeah. And they were all coming up over top of it. You know, I caught fish there. There was definitely fish holding there. Um, but you know, I don't like to be, first off, I feel like if I'm at a spot first, you should probably, you know, give me my, my spot because I'm there first. Right. Um, two, I'll never be the guy to like, just come in there and, and blow up a hole that you're fishing on. Cause I, you know, tournaments are tournaments, but being a, um, a punk like that's not me. I mean, he had, I want like a bass boat. This thing was like a big cabin cruiser. <laughs> so, I mean, when he come out. And like I said, I didn't care. Like, I mean, there's people come out and you'll fish, but literally, I mean, I was throwing, I don't know what I was throwing up there. I think maybe in the Ned rig. And I'm a cast in his boat. I mean, I can read his numbers, uh, you know, as clear as day. And then it's, that's too close. You know what I mean? Like if he had went out way above me and then drifted in, that was got to been cool. But hey, you know, whatever. I didn't care, you know. Yeah. Once I spotlocked on there, it was over. He couldn't get on it. I just sat there. Yeah, but the, uh, the difference between Altrex and uh, the Altair, the Altrex is a manual deployment. Um, the Altrex has a, a spring um, head on it, so it actually will take some um, yeah. more of a. You know, it doesn't have that indestructible shaft on it, so it has a spring in the housing that'll allow it to, like, if the shaft's down this way and you hit something, it'll allow it to bend and come back into. Uh, it's uh own it doesn't have a universal uh sonar mount on it uh like the altera does um the there's no spot lock uh the only thing ba- basically guys is it's cable a rock steer electronic steer yeah it's a rock solid cable steer um oh, they're good they're good the uh, the mount is a lot more beefy on yeah. an altrex yeah, um, it's it's thicker it's made out of aluminum um this has got the spring i think yours does don't it the... yeah mine's got a, it's got a shock absorber Sorry, in it yeah. so when you it's like a lift uh assist man yeah, that's what i was trying to think of um so that's there um by the way you guys so those of you guys that have motor guides teenage marine mm-hmm. has a uh, lift assist kit that you can buy uh speaking of which um 
I'm going to have Gene Eisenman come in on us here next time in two weeks when we come back in on this. Um, he is um, representative from Teenage Marine. We're going to be talking about all his stuff. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to get with him here in a few days. He's agreed to do that. So that's somebody we got coming in. And let's see. Uh, Riley Miller, yeah. Uh, I don't think we didn't. I, that's me, man. I'm telling you, that I had the learning curve of electronic panel. And I do will say this. When you're getting up on something and you're trying to turn, you know, a cable, you're yeah. back around. The electronic gets like, then you're around. Oh. So, you know, it was definitely a learning curve when it go. And, uh, but I tell you what, man, it's getting used to, of course, I can't recess my mind anymore. Remember I talked to you about yeah, the length sure of that. It. And that's another thing is so, I want to, if, if my trolling motor pedal won't recess, I'm not going to do that. But I know I'm going to have to come up with some kind of thing anyway, because the electronic trolling motor uh, is the foot pedal is really only about this thick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when you think of a recessed trolling motor tray, it's like this thick already. So I'm going to have to come up with something in the bottom of that thing to, I'm sure there's probably a company out there that makes those things. I just well, haven't looked I've at them. I looked. You have? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I can't find one. There's I was going to recess it. I thought about making my own. Just, I mean, yeah, but, I, I, I can fab it up, go buy me some aluminum or stainless or something and just. Hey, Chris, I'll see you on there, buddy. Uh, do you know anything like that? We're talking about the Altera trolling motor where it's foot where it's, the foot pedal, where it's thin. Um, you know the recessed trolling motor is is deeper. Is there a, is there a mount or something that you can get that will close that gap up to make it to where it's even with the top of your deck? Um, if not, there's a million dollars there waiting to be had. Yeah, maybe I should start fabricating. Yeah, um, but that's the one thing I'm looking at the Altera for sure. I don't know what I want to do as far as getting a graph or or whatever, but I think there's going to be a definite. Uh, if you look at um, a learning curve from that, like Josh says, I, I didn't realize that. I thought it would still move as quick as a cable. It doesn't. No. Oh, no. It's a lot slower. I mean, I don't know if Bradley, if he had one there, he'll tell you. It, it's, I mean, it's quick. But, I mean, a cable, you can kick it around right now. Oh, yeah, for sure. And like he said, you know, you can get it to where you kind of get where you're going. You know, I got it. I don't know. man. It's different. It really is. But it's, the the features I have make it nice. But I I like the. The cable feel. I prefer the cable feel. Yeah, foot um, pedal. But I like all the features that this one has. I wonder what the um, uh, is there a lifetime warning on the electronics in that thing? No, no. Three years. Three years. So that's that's uh, an issue. It's not too. much though. Uh, if you get a main code of parts, there was there was parts list, and I got a screw missing out of mine by the way, but uh, it's just a quarter twenty, so it's nothing big. Yeah. But um, yeah, I know the the three years. I think the board was like. I don't know, man. It's not much. Like it's weird. Like it well, I'm costs sure it's that a lot much. cheaper than to definitely a lot slower. Code. Yeah, rather I agree, man. And but as far as the parts, they weren't really that bad. I mean, you know, as far as the motors and stuff like that. Yeah, um, and that's what I'm looking at. Like I said, I'm I'm debating on buying a 12 inch graph for an Altera. And the thing about it is, I uh, I have a trolling motor that works, so I'm probably gonna look into the graphs. Um, yeah. Just for simple fact is, I'm gonna be traveling to St. Clair a lot. I'm gonna be traveling. Um, Larry Slack, I think has talked me into going to, uh, Douglas Lake, um, down in the Smokies. If I can't get work, I'm going on my spring break, which is the first week in April there. Um, and I don't think St. Clair is going to be unthawed by that time. It was last, <laughs> it was last year. year. It was last year. Like you said, it's been a really cold winter. Um, so there's probably going to be three foot of ice on that thing by that time. You can go ice fishing. Yeah. Um, Brad sent me a thing there the other day, and I watched it. I'll show it to you, man. There's a zone I was talking on live how he said that there's this one special time of the year in the early season that you can go up there and crankbait the crap out of smallmouth. And, dude, there is no way I didn't hit that, what he's talking about, because we smashed them. Like 50-degree water temperature on 1.5s on rocks yeah. at – 10 foot deep. I'm talking every time you drug a 1.5 across the rock pile, you were catching fish. Yeah. And, and I'll send it to you. It's on zone alive. Um, it's a pretty good deal. Speaking of which, um, I want to show you guys a couple pictures here. Um, actually one picture from, um, uh, that trip to St. Clair Misty, uh, the very first smallmouth she ever caught in her entire life, um, was a monstrosity of you a, got, you got to show the video. 
yeah. You, Happy feet, man. You, you, do, yeah, get on, get on YouTube. <laughs> you gotta watch that YouTube. Video. Get on YouTube and check it's it awesome. out because it it's it's funny and it's awesome to watch because that's the, that's that's the excitement though in fishing. That right there is what it's all about. You know? Yeah. So um, here it is. Here is uh, the biggest fish Misty caught, as far as I know, on the trip. And believe it or not, this is the very first smallmouth she'd ever caught in her entire life. Um, 53 degree water temperature, 10 foot deep. She was actually throwing a DT6 um, in a crawled ab pattern um, on a spinning rod. So she was actually slowing it down. But, you know, it was a over four pound smallmouth. This is before we even started weighing them. Yeah. We had been largemouth fishing all day. Uh, just for a simple fact, I pulled up on this point and made a hundred casts and never caught anything. So we went largemouth fishing and caught a ton of largemouth. And I was like, I came here to catch smallmouth. <laughs> so we're going to go try to catch one. Yeah. Um, so we pulled back up on that point. I started throwing crankbaits and she did too. And we had an absolute ball. Um, it's one of those deals where you don't, you can't, in, unless you were there or you've ever been there, you cannot put Lake St. Clair on the map with any other lake. Um, you know, there's... I mean, you're talking St. St. Lawrence River. You know, yeah. those places are full of smallies too. But somewhere close to here, St. Clair is a trip that you got to go. I know Brad out there. That's one of your favorite places to go. Cranking them out there too. But early in the season, we caught that one. Um, another thing is that we have Aaron Strickland, who normally is on the show with us. He must be busy tonight. That's a tub. But he went to um, Kiss- yeah, he went to Kissimmee <laughs> um, down in Florida and absolutely smoked some giants. He was on the hunt for some uh, for a ten pounder. Uh, didn't happen for him this time. I think the biggest one was seven and a half pounder, which is still a toad. Um, that's a really good fish there. Um, he has a really cool boat, guys. He has a big O boat. Um, thing's got a 300 horsepower motor on it. It's uh, it's got a scoop, but it, the way it's laid out and stuff, I love that uh, that the decking material on there. I check out the G Loomis logos that are actually in the. I think that stuff's called C deck. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But um, he has all of the the products that he uses there in his deck, which is really cool. He's got his name in it, which is really awesome. Um, so that's uh, one of the fish. So let's show the last one here. A uh, guy I work with, he went down this past week too, and he caught some. Uh, he's Shriner fishing, I guess. I think he said, I can't remember. Well, St. John's River, does that sound right down there? Probably, yeah. I, don't I can't know. remember what it was. I think it's where he said, but he caught a nine. Or him and another guy, they caught a nine, like an eight and a half, and a few sevens. But I think they said they caught like. 25 fish for the like four three or four days that's crazy um here's uh, another one that aaron caught on that trip uh he sent me another picture of his cousin who's like six foot five or something he's just a big individual and he was holding this fish and it, it looked like that same fish that aaron's holding there um it's like a six pounder but this dude was so big it looked like he was holding like a three and a half four pounder <laughs> he's like hey i just want you to make sure that you know that that guy is uh you know he's that's not, that's not a two pounder he's he's got a you know, five and a half, six pounder in his hand there. So See, there's a disadvantage of being a big guy. And I, I feel him, man. I feel you. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to work on that, but I I'm, feel it. I'm vertically challenged. Yeah. I'm five foot 10 <laughs> on a good day. Um, when you stand up straight. Yeah. yeah. I you know, need to get adjusted from the chiropractor. I might get five eleven if I'm yeah. lucky. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I'm sure it was nice to get someplace where it was actually, um, you know, water was not frozen. Um, water's not frozen around here, um, but it's a little too cold to fish. Sometimes I'm going to get out. Um, I'm going to get out soon, as soon as I get my boat back from uh, from getting fixed. I did land myself a 28-pitch uh, raker prop um, for a decent price, so pretty excited to get out there and try it out. Uh, the only problem is that it has um, the exhaust holes drilled in it um which probably is not going to work for my boat um so here's what i'm going to do <laughs> knowing that i have a little bit of engineering know-how i'm going to actually get the prop and i'm going to try to 3d print some plugs there you go i want to see why if it not? works um why not why not uh, i have a 3d printer I mean, in my what's, classroom what's thing do? throw them out 
Yeah, I mean, here's the deal. It would be a good good classroom project for my students. So I'll give them that prop and be like, find a way to put those holes <laughs> plugged up uh, with plastic. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I, I don't know what size they are where you could buy the, the mercury prop plugs and, and put them in there, but I don't know what size the holes are drilled in yet. But uh, the guy that I'm getting the thing off from is a really good welder. He says that he can weld them up and make them look like that it doesn't exist. So we're going to try it both ways. Um uh, my boat right now is about a 70, well, 71, with me and Josh in at 71 mile an hour with a full tank of gas and a um, full tournament load uh, without any water in the live wells. Um, you know, that's plenty fast, obviously, but I would like to, you know, my boat should be a 73, 74, 75 mile per, mile per hour boat, no matter how you slice it. Um, one, um, I don't know what's going on with it. First off, I have a bad stator. That may have something to do with it. I doubt it, um, but that's what I'm looking at. So that's that's an upgrade I'm definitely going to do to my boat. Hey, Jeff, what's going on, brother? Uh, did you ever get that um, Did you ever get that laser engraver uh, that we were talked about there a few months ago? What's going on, BJ? Sean, what's up, man? How you guys doing? But the, uh, I personally, oh, one button. I run a uh, four blade prop. I got a uh, Michigan wheel. It's four blade. It's a thirteen and a half by twenty four. I think's what it is, or twenty something. I have to look it up or check it out. But uh, I think it's a twenty one. Maybe it's a twenty one. I don't know, man. I think four blade. Four blades are way different. Yeah, but I tell you what, man. It's like right out of the hole. I like it. And, yeah. And big water like St. Clair, because sometimes it gets rough up there. You know, it I can cruise at 30 mile an hour and just tum, 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 right through the waves. It's it's pretty cool. My, I mean, with the four blade, I did lose about four or five miles an hour, roughly. I'm thinking it's like six mid 60s now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you're I'm gonna... happy with it because of just I like the four blade. I mean, that's I like it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, four and three blades have their uh, have their benefits and stuff. And we're gonna do a sh we're gonna do an episode on that probably next week. Talk, excuse me, man. Um, uh, talking about the um, benefits in my eyes as far as the three blade versus four blade. Um, the twenty eight pitch raker I got is a fourteen and a half by twenty eight pitch, which is a giant wheel. Yeah, like um, it's a monstrosity. Right now I'm turning. It'll be fun a, doing some testing with that. Right now I'm doing a twenty. I'm turning a twenty seven pitch turbo, and I can hit the rev limiter if i wanted to obviously i'm not on it but i could turn it to the rev limiter which is why i think i need to step up to the 28 pitch um i'd like to get that thing to run about 56 5700 rpms um you know at the correct height on my motor i do have a hydraulic jack plate uh, which is you know it makes it easier to test props in my opinion because you can throw them on there find yeah. out where they like to ride as opposed to Having to move a, a manual. I'd love to have one, yeah. Eventually I will, but right now. Yeah, I mean, they definitely have their benefits. But guys, uh, there ain't no sense of sitting here rambling all night long. Yeah. We pretty much covered the entire show that we wanted to cover from you guys. Um, we're, again, we're going to be putting out that uh, new tournament series coming up soon. If you're just now joining us, we're going to be uh, partnering with... Uh, Greg Drown at the Tackle Box doing a... Um, uh, March Madness, for lack of, of lack of better terms, it's not going to be in March. It's going to be sometime there. We're going to we're going to poll you guys, see when you guys want to have it. But it'll be um, bracket style, meaning that uh, you'll draw an opponent, and then you'll only fish against that opponent for that tournament. It'll be a, a three section event where you'll you'll fish Saturday, Sunday, and then the following Saturday. Um, but if you make it to the following Saturday, where you fish, you know, twelve boats or whatever will be left. You guys uh, will fish against each other as a whole. It's everybody against everybody. But if you make it to that last day, you're going to be guaranteed to get your money back. Uh, I'm going to hopefully talk to Drew and talk to um, people um, in the area, Tackle Box, um, a few other people, get some sponsors in for that. I think it's going to be a really good deal. I'm not fishing it. I don't, Josh is not fishing it. We're just going no. to put this tournament on. Um, guys, I'm going to try to do 100% payback. If I don't do 100% payback, I may use it as a fundraiser for my uh, STEM guitar building program there in the springtime. Um, you know, that's yet to be said. If there's right. if there's ever if it's there's a profit to be made, it'll be minuscule and it'll go to a good cause. But right now, I'm gonna try to make it to where there's no it'll be everything's payback. Um, and again, I just want to make it see it out there, see how many people get uh, involved in it. 
maybe we can get people like Angler and Shimano and G Loomis and those guys to, you know, I'm sure they'll be in on it because like I said, um, this was uh, Steve Riley's idea. That's that's not my brainchild. He he showed me the way, if you will, right, and yeah. I think it's a great idea. Um, it'll be fun. It'll yeah, be fun. I think it'll be a good idea. So, and it could very well be the next major league fishing style event. So, we're trying to look into that. But again, uh, I want to thank you guys for sticking around. Do yeah. not forget about the um, tackle box open house coming up the 17th and 18th. I'm sure Chris will have some of his new boats up there. By the way, man, that that purple bullet you had the other day. I'm not a huge bullet fan, but that thing was sweet looking. Yeah, I love that nice. thing. I'm sure it's probably already sold by now. If not, they if it has, I'm sure you got another one in. Um, but you know, again, uh, thanks for you guys watching for uh, for tonight. I want to thank Lance Carpenter for his theme music that we're going to see, and you guys are going to see here in just a second. So stick right. around on that. If you guys are interested in getting your hands on a copy of it, go out to iTunes or on the Google Play Store and search for Lance Carpenter, and it's called Another Line. Um, and again, this pretty much wraps up our episode we have for you this week. You have anything for him, Josh? That's about it. Uh, hopefully see you guys. Make sure you share out. Make sure you hit our, uh, if you haven't shared the rod uh, post, share it, like, whatever you got to do. There's three things on there. directions. Just read all of them. Share that thing out. We're going to random draw it probably tomorrow about noon. We'll put on there when it when it stops. So, yeah, man, uh, make sure you do it. So who don't like a free ride? It's a free ride. We're yeah. shipping it to you for, for 100% yeah. we free. We are not endorsing this ride, though. I'll yeah. That, make uh, that clear. We got to uh, we'll make sure that it was it was a given to us. We're just getting rid of it. Yeah, uh, again, so. I fish with G. Lemus and Shimano. I'm affiliated with them. So, um, again, we just wanted to help somebody else out there. Right. It will be shipped to you in an actual Shimano ride tube. Because that's all I have. But anyway, um, get on there. Make sure you're entered. If you're entered already, awesome. I will post on there on uh, Fishing with Tyler on another line. Uh, it'll be on there tomorrow. Good luck for you guys. Yeah. Thank you guys for sticking around for episode number five. If you guys want to uh, hear us talk about a, a topic next show, which uh, let me see. Um, it's tough to see my calendar here. It will be the 22nd um, of February. So we'll be back on another line for episode six on February 22nd. If you guys want to hear a topic or want to discuss the topic, uh, comment it either below or shoot us a message or whatever. We'll definitely do that. And also, um, you know, if you guys have any pictures of fish, even from years past, if your kids, guys, if you have any kids that have photos, send them in. Um, we're going to uh, be looking into trying to do some things for some kids. Um, <laughs> Uh, for the kids later. I'm talking about the kids. Oh, you know, we're yeah. talking about trying to get in with a kids um, yeah. like uh, organization, somebody right. that like um, casting for kids or right. um, make a wish or whatever and trying to um, make hey, awareness for that. Showed up. What's up, Aaron? What's up, Aaron? You're here covered for the last two minutes. Um, but, you know, we're definitely trying to get into that. So anything that you have uh, that you want to see and be put out there, um, I appreciate if you guys will send it to us. We'll definitely get it out there. The last show we've done actually done really, really well uh, compared to another big name podcast that's out there. Um, we were right in the hunt with them, if not producing a little better than they were. So, again, guys, thank you for sticking around. Yeah, I appreciate it. My name is Tyler Waller. I'm Josh Bryant. Thank you for coming around on a, this episode of On Another Line. We'll see you guys next week, or actually two weeks from now. <laughs> Full of Bass Pro, a couple rods and a flat bottom boat. Hook it up to the truck, got a hot date with a fishing hole. Got a nice chest, well it's empty right now. Grab a 30 pack, fill it up, ice it down. Back the boat down the ramp, ease her out through the no way zone.